lamination is tedious so let's skip it and make a patty crust that's much easier quicker and still delicious i'm also going to show you how to make the most scrumptious veggie filling even if you don't make the patty you have to make this it's that good let's jump right in and i'm starting with the dough the lamination is layering fat in the dough to make it flaky but i'm going to show you another easier technique i use to get to the same results before that let's get the curry ready in all my other patty recipes i use egg powder to color the crust curry or turmeric always overpower the other flavors in the patty handling the curry this way really mellows out the sharp overpowering flavors so to two tablespoons of oil i'm adding a tablespoon of turmeric and a tablespoon of curry powder this beta pack curry contains mostly turmeric and small amounts of other spices so it won't add too much complexity to the flavor of the crust I don't want it to clash too much with the filling. Cook that off for about a minute on low heat. This burns pretty easy so be gentle. The oil helps to disperse the color and heat in it mellows out the sharper raw flavors of the curry. If you don't mind those flavors then simply skip this step. Set that aside to cool. The fat I'm using in the crust is margarine. Vegan butter was my first option but I could not get any. Not all margarine are created equal, so choose a brand that works for you. This has added vitamins and no trans fats. I get 4 2 ounce portions for a total of 8 ounces. Typically, I would use all of this in a dough with 1 pound of flour, but I'm only going to use 6 ounces because the curry mixture earlier will also be adding fat. I'm going to give these some medium dice. Although we want solid fat for the dough, this margarine is a bit more forgiving than butter but it will still get really soft so you can chill it down if it gets too soft. These are nice and firm though. I'm just going to set that aside and weigh out a pound of all-purpose flour. A pound is 453 grams so that's what I want. So to that flour, I'm adding 2 tablespoons brown sugar. Cheese sugar is fine too, the sugar also helps to take the edge off the curry. Half a teaspoon salt. Give that a little shake and then add the margarine. It's still very solid. Next add the oil curry mixture. I'm giving it a mix so the oil and curry don't separate. The next step is to go in and flatten out the cubes of the margarine. This is similar to making short crust pastry. The big difference is that I'm making big flat pieces of butter instead of trying to make it like breadcrumbs. Those flat pieces of margarine is what's going to make this flaky. Next, I want some ice cold water. I'm just going to drizzle it in, very small amounts at a time. The cold water will re-solidify the fat and prevent it from dissolving into the flour. The key thing here is to use as little water as possible and not to over mix. I like this motion where I lift all the flour, turn it over and then press it down. This way I don't work the dough too much and mix in the margarine. I'm stopping once the flour is mostly hydrated. Doing it like this will give me much crispier patty crust. It's a flake already and it's not even baked yet. Next I'm just getting it kind of flat so it cools quickly. Give that a nice secure wrap. This is going to chill in the fridge. In the meantime, I can work on the filling. I'm using kidney beans for this filling. I remember when I was in high school, I used to buy veggie patty from a small patty shop after school, near where I got taxi to go home. And the thing that stood out the most was the kidney beans. I love the creamy texture. Chickpeas are garbanzo beans. 
This is one of my favorite peas. They have a nice creamy taste and texture. Extremely delicious and filling. A bit of pop chai to add at the end. And I have a few more stuff that I pre prep. Soon get into them. Pumpkin. A good quality pumpkin like this will do wonders for your stews. And that's it. That's pretty much all I want. I'm using a relatively tall saucepan to hold everything. Add a generous splash of oil and let it get hot on medium heat. I want to saute and not sweat. And I'm using a good amount of vegetables. Next, an entire bulb of chopped garlic. Two stalks of chopped scallion, both greens and whites. This is one sliced medium onion. Fresh thyme. Who uses dried thyme? Dried thyme is a scam. Bay leaf, two leaves. That's going to add a ton of fragrance. I'm stirring so nothing burns. Sauteing veggies and spices like this really transform the flavor of a dish. This is the most critical step of any stew. Ground pimento. That's about a tablespoon and a half. It can take it. One slice green scotchy. One diced carrot or about half cup. Letting these get a proper saute is essential for building the best flavors. When these get slightly brown and when the fragrance of the spices reaches a peak, it's a good indicator of when we can add the wetter ingredients. Diced pumpkin going about half a cup. Kernel corn. That's left over from the items you I did the other day. So check out that video if you haven't seen it as yet. Keep that moving so nothing burns. A tablespoon of coriander powder to brighten this up. We can now add the water ingredients starting with the kidney bean including the water. I'm almost done so these won't overcook. Chickpeas. Did I mention that I love these? This needs a splash of water. This is coming together really well. I'm going to separate out some of the veggies and liquid. Hopefully I can use this to thicken the filling. Give it a smooth blend. I added a splash of water to the blender to loosen it up. Nice. Give that a little taste. The flavors are great, it's just a little fresh. I like to add a small amount of salt early to get the flavors going instead of seasoning all at once at the end. I find that it has a bit more depth when I do it like that. Give it another taste. It's not quite there yet but we don't want it to be there because it might reduce and get much saltier. This is good. Let that simmer on the lowest heat because it will burn pretty easy. This has been simmering for about 10 minutes and this is too runny to use as filling so I'm going to use a bit of cornstarch slurry to thicken it. Bear in mind that this gets much thicker when it cools completely so you have to factor that in when you're thickening. This doesn't necessarily need cornstarch. I could have blended more of the vegetables to give it that body that it needs. Wow, that is looking good. Give that a taste and I can finish seasoning now with a bit more salt. I have some scallion from the soup video two days ago and some chopped parsley from another project. 
I'm just going to use them up. Don't want them to go bad. I also have some pop chai that I want to use up so I'm putting it in the filling as well. This cooks extremely quick. I'm just trying to shrink it down so everything will fit. That looks great and tastes even better. I one shot this video and I am very impressed. Next step, I'm just going to pour this out to let it cool. This by itself as it is, is an excellent dish. So I'm going to make a plate and enjoy that while the rest cools. Should I have some roti? I'm going to wrap this up, make some vent holes and let it cool. This is probably going to take a good while to cool so I ended up making an ice bath to speed up the cooling process. After the filling is completely cool, I can work on the potty crust. I need a generous dusting of flour. That's almost rock solid. That's just the margarine solidifying because of the low temperature. The dough will quickly come up to room temperature and the margarine will start to liquefy and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is work with a smaller amount of the dough at a time. Those visible pieces of margarine are going to give me layers. Half goes back in the fridge to chill out. Let's roll this out. The dough can be real hard so a pressing motion with the rolling pin helps to flatten it out a bit and makes rolling easier. To get rid of those jagged edges, all I have to do is make two folds. This won't be perfectly neat, especially if the dough is low hydration. The edges will be jagged most of the time, but that's really not important. I know a lot of people whose favorite part of the patty is the crust. I like balanced dough, so good crust complemented by good filling. I'm going to roll this out into somewhat of a rectangle. This dough makes between 9 and probably 13, 14 patties depending on the size. I like to roll it as thin as possible but not so thin that it can properly hold the filling. And I want a balance between the amount of filling and crust. Grab the filling. I like to use a quarter cup measure to portion out the filling. If you have a cold kitchen you could do much more but 3 patties at a time is a sweet spot for me. Give that a fold and pat out the excess here. I'm using a ravioli cutter to cut these out. This is the best thing for Jamaican patties. The shape is more of a rectangle with one side having rounded edges but you could shape them however you want. I'm going to get them in the fridge to chill so they can stay firm. I'm also going to grab the other half of the dough. Wrap up those trimmings and get them in the fridge. I'm going to use them later to make more. If I had a really cold kitchen, I could have made all the patties in one go. Just roll out the entire dough into one long rectangular strip. Place the filling on, fold and cut them out. That's how patty shops do them in bulk. If you can control the ambient temperature of your kitchen, making patties become much more efficient and you can make an entire batch in one go. Unlike me, where I have to make batches of three at a time. I'm going to have to patch that one with a little bit of dough. I'm going to pop these on and get them into the fridge.
I'm placing all the trimmings together and I'm placing them into the freezer. These usually give me putties that are less flaky because they get worked more. When it's solid again, I can go ahead and roll out the rest of the dough. Instead of making three patties at a time, I could also make many more smaller patties. Kinda like cocktail sizes, I could make a lot really quick. And that's it. I still have a little bit of trimmings left, but I'm going to throw that into the freezer for now. I'm only going to bake four and get the rest into the freezer for some other time. These four are going on a grease baking sheet. Use grease paper for extra security. This is going into the oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees. These will take a good 20 to 25 minutes. Alright, these are done. I have a bit of spilling with this filling. That's still perfectly fine. These smell really good. Yeah, that's too hot. Let's give it a minute. But yeah, so far we have some really great veggie patty. Let's give that a bite. It's it's still hot. Yup, that's really good. Tastes a lot like the after school patties, but better. That filling is killing it. And the crust is crispy and mellow. The slightly sweet taste complements the filling really well. And it has that melt in your mouth quality. This is currently one of my most favorite recipes. Might be yours too if you give it a try. Subscribe for more bomb recipes and check the description for ways to support the channel. Also, consider becoming a patron. This was delicious. Check out my patty playlist for other Jamaican patties. Thanks for watching squad and I'll see you in the next one.